in a place where you've made this decision. You're still making music. And for some, you're, you're not secular enough. <laughs> yeah. And then for the church, you're not non-secular enough. enough. So how was, what was that like trying to wedge yourself into that space? Look here, no, Simone. I don't got a wedge. I just got to be me. And if you like me, you like me. And if you don't like me, God bless you and go with you and carry you where me now go. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Because I have to be myself, you know. I've, I've even launched into, a, like you said, when you introduced me as broadcaster a while ago. I said, oh my gosh, I'm a broadcaster and this is all God, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's not me trying to wedge myself into anything. It's just being exactly who I am, you know, and, and falling into whatever, wherever he has me to go, yeah. you know. Yeah, we spoke about you coming off a tour. Mm -hmm. mm. And you said you, you came home off the tour and you were standing in the airport and you were so, the word you said was empty. Yeah, yeah. You've been going through a period where you just felt empty. Yes. You're doing all these things, but you still feel empty. Yes. Sad. Yeah. Prolonged period of sadness. You said to me, not a regular sadness, like depressed sadness. Mm -hmm. What was that about? And that's the thing. Like there are so many, there are so many goals that I've set in my life. I'm blessed and I recognize that I am blessed. That doesn't stop me from, from being discouraged or sometimes failing or making mistakes. And I'm the kind of person that constantly uh, self-condemnation was something that was something I was great at. Yeah. You know, I'd remember all the mistakes I made. I'd remember all the missteps. And I'd say, but how could you do something like that? You know better than that. Or why didn't I, why didn't I do that? Or, you know, and, and so those things will, will, will seep away. At, at your, you make your joy dissipate. They will just tear you down. And then it becomes... Oh yeah, this is who you are, you know. So I was at that place now, whereas constantly, even though you have the accolades and you have the people cheering and you have, you know, uh, blessings uh, in abundance, if your self-talk isn't positive, if your self-talk uh, does not represent what God says about you, then it can drain you, yeah. you know. And that's where I was. And when I was saying it to you, I was like, as in the, as in the. Um, what do you want to call it when you reach the hall, yeah. customs hall, where you have to stand up long mm -hmm. and wait for your bag? Mm -hmm. And a lady, a, a young lady walked over to me and she just said to me, God says to say that he loves you. Oh, okay, what does lady know about mm -hmm. me? And I didn't know. She says, I know you're going through a lot, but he loves you. And water full up my eyes. The catalyst I asked you for when you got baptized, mm -hmm. you got sick. Yeah. It was, just, it was a, an air infection. Yes. But it was a, obviously it was a bigger deal because it, it forced you to a place. Yes, absolutely. Talk to me about that time in your life. Yes, yeah, so it was eustachian tube dysfunction. And, and the eustachian tube basically controls uh, balance. Ah, oh, Lord, you are good. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it, it was indicative, of course, of a sinus situation where my nose just keep on draining and draining and after a while the eustachian tube just couldn't keep up with it and so I felt dizzy mm. if anybody has ever felt what in vertigo mm -hmm. it don't feel good and you're not moving and you feel like you're Dropping moving over. yeah man and the nausea and you know going to the doctor and doing all type of tests and going into into the um the, the thing and them looking the at your brain right, yeah. to see yeah. if everything yeah. all right with your brain. I say, Daddy, Daddy, me no know what to me. me not, not, him say nothing no wrong with your brain. Let <laughs> them look in there <laughs> because my father <laughs> is serenity yeah. personified. Yeah. You know, and, and he's always been, you know, just such a, a calming spirit and presence in my life. Mm -hmm. um, God bless him. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, we went through that and, and not knowing what it was and then finding out it was this eustachian tube dysfunction and then, you know, we set about dealing with it uh, physically. But then, because I know everything is spiritual first, I said, what does this mean? My life is out of balance. What is this representing? What do I need to do in order to contribute to standing on solid ground, you know, to be on a firm foundation? And, you know, I've always been searching the scripture. If you know anything about me, you know, say, I love Bible and I love pen. <laughs> Any man out there who is single who's <laughs> going to be my husband, that's all you got to buy me. Bible and pen. Anyway, I digress. Yes, so, quite. I was searching the scriptures <laughs> because I said, okay, where's my peace? Where's my peace? Where's my balance? And, and, and so, you know, I said, you know, Lord, I, I need an answer. 
and it, and it led me to wanting a, a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ, who is my Lord and Savior. And um, it was all about baptism. I said, but me not, me not going to church when I really like to that. And then my beautiful sister queen, Camille Davis, uh, called me one day and invited me to church. And it wasn't even that we were friends mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. You know, we just actually buck, bucked up at an award show. We arrived at the same time. And so we ended up taking pictures together. We started dancing together, like, uh, you know, with, with everybody and then we're laughing. I know her. She's hilarious, beautiful, uh, saved woman of God. And she said, she just said, hey, Alain, you know, uh, direct message. We were talking and then she says, come to church now. So I said, oh, yeah, that's Ryan Mark's church, pure in heart. But Ryan Mark is not a preacher. Ryan Mark is an artist. He can yeah. preach. And I said, anyway, I'm going to go. And I went and uh, Pastor Ryan Mark is a brilliant speaker who just uh, exudes the unconditional accepting love of God. And I remember I was there and I said, oh, no, this is where I need to be. Mm -hmm. so, so all of that prolonged period of darkness and despair that we spoke about, mm. um, you said you kept hearing, remember who you are. Ah, yes. Remember who you are and whose you are. And, for, for, and it's easy to forget. It's easy to be caught up in who people say you are or be caught up in what you did or to be caught up in what you, not haven't, done. What you haven't done, what you've missed, what you think you've missed out at, you know, what you feel like you've, you've you know, okay, I've fallen short of it, so I'll never get there, you know, and that's a lie, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so all of this was uh, God saying, I remember you. Do you remember you? You know, I've never forgotten you. I've always been close to you. And then through a series of events, as God does very intentionally, you know, I was invited to church. And uh, one Wednesday night, I remember sitting in the service and I felt the spirit of the Lord imparting my soul. I'm ready for you to be baptized. And I said, OK, Jesus, so am I. And uh, Wayne Marshall was sitting mm -hmm. beside me the night. Mm -hmm. He was in church the night. And uh, I said to him, hey, Wayne, I'm going to ask Ryan to baptize me, you know, Pastor Ryan. Because I know Pastor Ryan as Ryan, mm -hmm. as a fellow artist. And then he said, you know, baptized already. And I said, mm-hmm. He said, oh, OK. And I remember Wayne came into the room with me. And, you know, when I told uh, Pastor Ryan what I, that I bought, wanted baptism, he said, oh, really? OK. Great. And hell sure it was. Hell sure. Into the into morning. Into your alabaster box. Look. Ah. So, we're not telling the story. <laughs> you can if you want. So me Bali Bali, right, Simone? <laughs> Just like a yo -yo. And my mother, too, is where I got the bowlingness from. So after I you know, accepted, do you uh, baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, of boom, dip. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy. You waited on me, Father God. You are worthy. I am so grateful. I feel like, oh, yes, this is the beginning of something amazing. Me look on, the, uh, on, the, on this um, shore now. I see my father. I see my mother. I see some of my friends who mean the world to me. Mm -hmm. I rush to my mother and me and her just, you know, interlock in this love-filled embrace. She knows everything about me. I hide nothing from my parents. And she ball at me, ball. And then I just felt another set of hands reach around me and mommy. And, they, and then I looked and I saw a lady in a red and white polka dot <laughs> bikini. Oh, come on with the, with the truth that God love. And the belly it's over the bikini. <laughs> Come on now. Start to and sing. And the ladies, oh, come on. <laughs> you don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box. And so I bust out a laughing because mm. the ball in it have to put palm pause. But the message was clear. The message was clear. The message was clear. Yeah. It matters what you know about your life and what you are bringing to Christ. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. And also, God was saying to me, stop the balling. Mm -hmm. It's time for you rejoice. to smile now. It's yeah. time for you to rejoice. Yeah. It is well. Uh, that story is, uh, comes from a Bible story uh, about the Shunammite woman. The Shunammite woman is a woman who made room for the man of God in her home. She built a room for the man of God uh, to come in when he visited the town. He, she said to her husband, let's build a room for him. And she invited him into her house, and he lived there when he was in town. And then he sent his, his, um, his assistant to ask her, ask her what she wants, because she's been so kind to us, you know. Let me petition, you know, God's own for her. But she said, I don't want a thing, me, all right. So then the, the, um, uh, the, the servant of the man of God said, 
oh, but she doesn't have any children. So the man of God called her to the room and said, this time next year, you're going to have children. She said, no, don't let me hope. Don't let me hope and then make my hopes blow up in smoke like they have blown up in smoke so many times before. And he said, next year, this time you will have your son. Boom, she have our picnic. And 12 years later, I believe, the son dies. The father sends, tells her, you know, the father of the son says, you know, your son is dead. She said, it is well. Saddle up my donkey. I'm going to the man of God. And she rode the donkey to the man of God. And all the way, he sent his servant to her and said, I didn't, God never told me she was coming, you know. What, what's she doing here? Go to her, ask her what's wrong. She saw the servant of the man of God. She said, it is well. She went to him and said, look, you told me, you gave me this son, my hope. And you said I would hold him and you are going to come and deal with this because you made me a promise. And the man of God went and the son was resurrected. It is well, there is power in declaring it is well when situations seem hopeless and despair surrounds you and when you feel like you can't make it, you declare, use the power of your word which does not return to you void but which God has given us the authority to use to lift you from the pits of despair. There is resurrection of dreams when you make room in your life for God. And that is what that woman did. And when the darkness came, she declared it is well in the face of the darkness and went and placed her son in the room that she had made for the man of God. So everyone who feels despair now, everyone who feels a loss of hope, place that thing that you think is dead in the room that you create for your God, in that place of your worship, in that place of your prayer, and believe and know without a doubt that resurrection is coming and that it is well. All right. Thank you for coming to Elaine's church. That was a serve man. Um, thank you for that, lady, and for sharing your story. And we know it is well Amen. with you. It thank you well. so much thank you. for being here. We're going to close out, as we always do, with our affirmation. So here we go. Oh, boy. Life is so peculiar sometimes, eh? We, we want it all, and when we get it, we realize it's not enough. We build lives filled with lots of things that add up to emptiness. Like, how does that math even work? Well, T.D. Jakes once said that real value isn't in what you own, or wear, or drive, or where you live. The greater value, he says, is found in love and life, health and strength, friends and family, and I would add here, in faith. Instant gratification is often coupled with long-term unhappiness. And what you think will liberate you is often the most burdensome thing in your life. And to free your mind, you'll have to free yourself from it, from the baggage, the pressure, and yes, the pain. Unplug from what is draining you and plug into your source hey. of joy, of happiness, of peace. Then you are choosing to access the positive energy to live a more fulfilled and fulfilling life. So tonight we are affirming, I trust, I know, and I will live to tell. I know in time it will be well, Hallelujah. that is our soul food for tonight.